organizations. Now, this, this is a premise. This premise is, what if you produce more by working less? That is my, my scariest slide to present, especially to, you know, meat-eating real business people. But everything we know about innovation and creativity says that if all you do is work, you'll flatline. Your creativity will flatline. Think of a long distance runner. If they overtrain, in other words, they're doing 20 miles a day, 15 miles a day, 17 miles a day, 70 miles a week, week after week after week, you know what happens to their times? They go down. Because there's no recovery. It's called flatlining plateauing. We also know that we don't get better without stress. We don't get better without challenge. So think of weightlifting. You know, if I didn't know anything about the human body and I was going to be in a weightlifting contest, fortunately I'm not going to be, but if I was going to be and I didn't know anything about the human body, I might say, gosh, I'm going to be in this weightlifting contest. I'm just going to go to bed for six weeks, save up all my energy, right? And I'd atrophy. Because I need the stress of progressively lifting weights and then allowing those muscles to rebuild. You know when you lift weights sore, you get sore? You get what are called micro tears in the muscle tissue. And when they rebuild, they rebuild stronger. So you get this. <laughs> but it's, it's the recovery where the strength building occurs. So Herb Benson at Harvard has done all this study on creativity and what happens in the mind. He actually has a process called sleep innovation. And that, have you ever woken up in the middle of the night with a bright idea and you had to write it down? That's what sleep innovation is about. That's your brain at rest. It's your brain at rest, coming up with ideas that you can't come up with when your conscious mind is so full of multitasking responsibilities. So what we know about creativity and the way the brain works is that you work on a problem. You just work it from every angle. You research it. You talk to others. You get tons of input and then you just let it go. And the best thing you can do when you let it go is engage in something that is totally immersive to you. Something you totally love. Something that completely absorbs your mind away from your problem and that's where the insight comes. Because the insight is all happening in your subconscious processing part of your brain. So he tells this famous story of a, of a very uh, overstressed executive who's going to make a very, very important uh, presentation and uh, had way too many slides. You know, you know, it's those kind of slides where there's like 18 little bullet points on each slide. You've been in meetings like that? And she just could not figure out how to make it any simpler. And she I, you know, people are going to get fatigued. By the time I come up to my big ask, th they're going to say, you know, we're, we're too lost to even care. So one of her favorite things was an art museum. She left her building, walked out down the street, went to the art museum. She had a favorite painting in the art museum, Monet. And it, had, it was one of those art museums with a nice little bench. She spent 20 minutes looking at this one painting. And for her, it was uh, uh, just like going to a symphony. And as she was walking back to her office, she reduced her presentation to six slides. Her own mind just worked all through the clutter and got to the, the absolute essentialness of her message. But if we take away people's recovery, if we do what Money Brothers Music here did and just load people up, oh, you could do another job, you could do another job, you could do another job, you could do another job. More with less, more with less. Gosh, we're being productive. You, you, you rob people of that recovery time. Innovation goes down and you begin this death spiral. And that happens in all four dimensions. So we're learning all these things about living life in a rhythm of stress and recovery, stress and recovery, stress and recovery. But in most organizations, if this was the bowl of talent, we're only getting 
a fraction of the potential performance because of all these interfering emotional, fear-driven feelings. Physical exhaustion, anxiety, confusion over what's important, and the worst of all is cynicism. Cynicism is when somebody important says this is what we're all about, but we're really not all about that. What we're all about is money. So if you look at how to drive human performance, you see that if you work on things that give you physical stamina, you also create the energy to think, collaborate, to work with others, to want to work with others, to want to work on difficult problems. When we work on the mental side of our energy, what we're trying to do is create stories of opportunities because it's these stories of opportunities that makes us see what's possible that we never saw was for. And when we work on spiritual energy, that is the daily connection, that the daily connection of what's really important, what our ultimate mission as an individual is and what our ultimate mission as a business organization is. It's not a plaque on the wall. It's something that we're able to talk about, that we want to talk about, that people want to talk about every day.